this time the enhanced reality demonstrations. And uh, I have those here. Let me sh just get one of them started here. What we did at SIGGRAPH is we had two PlayStation 2s networked together. And you could see video of the other person, and they saw video of you. We also had another little monitor you could see yourself if you needed to. But um, we had a magic duel, is what it was called. So you would cast spells at them, and they would cast spells at you, and you'd battle each other. And it was, it was kind of a neat setup. Again, it was supposed to be a technology demonstration, but we were really trying to make it fun anyway. And uh, this is when the online cal calibration happened. I was in England that time, and there could be no lighting issues. So we learned, how do we just get rid of all these issues? So now there's no calibration in this demo yet. I hold this button down. I hold the color in it that I want it to track. Now it's tracking that color. So that's the level of calibration we're allowed to do. And that's what we wanted to have our, is our goal. So, oops. Oh, that's the exit. I'm sorry. Run that one again. So, shoot. So one other thing uh, in this demo that I'm going to show you is we showed a lot of the special effects, but this time mixed with the graphics. So not just video effects, not just image processing effects, but actually bringing in computer graphics. Because the game people really like to see virtual objects and things, not just, not just video. A lot of the video demos we'd show them, they think it was kind of neat, but they are kind of turned off by just the image processing. So here we go. Again, sorry, I exited that demo. When we showed this at a SIGGRAPH, we had pers one person who wouldn't leave the demo. He stayed there for eight hours. And he, he became such an expert that we just let him run it. You know? we just, and he was about 14 years old, so it was great, because you know, it was clear that he was enjoying himself. And <laughs> so, yeah. so I'll step out here. So one of the tricks is you can do, if you take a picture of the scene without you in it, you can do a lot of these tricks. So now I've got this kind of ball. You can see this kind of magical effect. It's leaving. But I want it to be like a wand, so I have to twiddle my hand over it. Now it's really magical. So now I really have this magic effect. And now I can draw a shape, like a circle. A circle spell. And then a, the obligatory fireball spell. <laughs> if anyone's a role-playing game person here, they would know what I mean. So if you draw a different shape, like a square, you get the air spells. So this time I'm going to cast the hurricane spell. So, so the uh, the thing is, when we when we showed this demonstration, I had I had these huge hopes for it. So I wanted it to be that you'd always you'd cast one spell, and then there'd be a counter spell you could quickly do, and then there you know we ran out of time to do all these things. It's supposed to be a technology demonstration, but we did get a few of these kind of spell and counter spells done, and. And if I do this one, let's see if I can draw this kind of weird shape. This is the, the mind spells. Invisible. So there's the invisibility spell. So you know, I fade myself out. And this is achieved by taking that background picture and then alphaing in the live video. It's a cheap effect, but it always gets a good response. And then the counter spell to invisibility is, a, is the true sight spell. So if he's cast invisibility on himself, you can cast true sight so that you can see him. That brings out your little eyeball so that you can see him. <laughs> Or you can just play with the eyeball, you know, and you can have it be this kind of fun toy. So the way it worked is you could <laughs> the way it worked is you could cast a spell right away and you'd get kind of a weak spell, or you could cast you could wait and get a more powerful spell. So if I do the circle again, if I go right away I get the fireball, but if I wait longer, you could scorch him. That's the spell we made up. So, so this is a scorch spell. And that would just, you know, you can see the kind of fire effect. And then we also had a special effect just for California, because it was being shown there. So the Earth spells. Earthquake. <laughs> and the other reason for the spells is it requires no artwork. So anything that requires no artwork. The hurricane at the beginning, I had help from an artist, and as the spells got progressively 
you know, I lost my artist support, so then I had to switch to new <laughs> techniques. Anyway, that gives you an idea of that. And another, so at the same time as that demo, we were showing another demo. Oops, sorry, don't switch back yet. We showed this other little demo, which we call Seymour the, the Space Boy. And this uses two colored balls. And it's really simple, but when you think about what we're doing, it's really hard to achieve any other way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell it to track this color here. There we go. And then tell it to track that color. And now I have these two colored balls. And when I move them around, he, when I touch them together, he jumps out. And I'm controlling two 3D objects in 3D space with just, you know, these colored balls. If you try to do this with joysticks, it's really hard to move things in 3D anyway. So, you know, we're doing this really kind of hard thing, but it looks kind of trivial. And uh, there's no real goal to this, this, but, you know, it's kind of fun. You can Whoa! make him fall off, and the plane always saves him because it was made for kids. But <laughs> if, if he does little tricks, and if I come back here and I shake him, he loses his balance, you know. And we know where the balls are because we're tracking them, and we know their size. So we know them in 3D. That's why I can bring him way up to the camera and do this kind of effect. He does little flips. But I can also render the balls into the Z-buffer, so the ball can occlude. You can see I'm, I'm blocking him with the ball. And I can also block you know, the, the ship with the ball. So that's a kind of a subtle effect that he's really kind of matted in the right spot with the ball. And uh, Then, like I was talking about the lighting before, you can get that from the ball. So there's a lot of things just from two simple objects like this that you could do. And we had these two things, and we'd always have two kids walk up, and one would grab one and one grab the other. And then they just sit there and bonk them back and forth, making them jump in and out. <laughs> and so it seems really not that fun of a thing, but little kids just like to play. You know, little kids don't need a goal. They just want to play. They'll hide it behind their back and see what happens. You know, that's all they want. They don't. So, that's a really, and, and, and <laughs> during this demonstration, we really learned how much people love to see themselves on TV, especially, especially kids. We thought, you know, people would be kind of put off by seeing themselves on TV. Not at all. Turned out not to be the case. So switch back to the talk here. Like I said, yeah, people really like to see themselves on TV. Did we lose something here? Oh, there we go. So, for the next six months, basically, I went back to R and D. I helped work with I helped work on the camera design with OmniVision while the game team worked on the game. The original prototype we made was really technologically technologically cool. It was awesome, but not fun. And we knew it wasn't fun when we tried it. You know, when we'd show it to somebody, they'd be like, like especially kids would die to play it but it wasn't fun, and we knew that. So they started over from scratch, focused on fun this time. And, and I think that was the biggest correct decision they made in the whole process, is that they just went for fun. And they came up with new design constraints around the camera. Instead of trying to make a traditional game that was like an adventure game or something, they switched to a camera game. And so the other thing that happened during this time is I was promoted to be the manager of the special projects group. So now, really, my part of the process with the iToy game is done. The research is done. The game team has all the technology. They can make the game. They know what they're supposed to do now. I supported them, but really, I'm done. And now I have a lot of other things to move on to, new research projects, things like that. That's a very hard thing to do this, but that's the reality of the way it worked. And so special projects, it's really, um, we research a lot of different areas. It's kind of the collection of everything else in our group. And it's, right now it's physical simulation, character animation, procedural things, and uh, also all the man-machine interface work using mostly cameras and microphones, but we've done some force feedback and some inertial systems. So a lot of different stuff in the special projects group. So then we have a new boss. I have a new boss's boss. This time he's in, from Japan. And he's giving the keynote at the game developer conference. And again, he wants to show the work. So same hall, same nasty spotlights, but this time two years more wisdom. So 
We get up there, the calibration's on the fly. I just hold that ball in the circle, hit the button, everything's done. It's all built into the demos. Works perfect. Demos are pretty mature, even though some people, they've never been, one of them had never been shown publicly. It was pretty mature. So finally, I got it right. You know, I uh, got that monkey off my back. Everyone was so worried. Again, if that failed, what would we do? But it worked great. So I felt a lot better. So uh, next, I show, I show, now everything's going really good, and there's a lot of positive vibe. And I show it again at the Game Developer Conference and say, you should all start working on this. There's going to be a camera. And they're still, they have their schedules, their deadlines, their reality of their, so all the third parties are still like, it's really neat, and we'll believe it when they see it kind of thing. You know, it's unfortunate, but that's the way the world works. So I was frustrated, but at least this time I could give them a, a, a sample camera, not the final camera, but a sample